Good morning, everyone. Continuation of the preventative maintenance. Yesterday we did the engine oil and oil filter. Day before we did the generator, engine oil, fuel filter and air filter. Today we are doing the fuel filter and fuel water separator. Fuel filter, fuel water separator. Freightliner calls it primary filter and secondary filter. Um, but that's actually a separator if you ask me. But that's what we're working on today. Let's get started. All right, here's the what they call secondary fuel filter. I call it the regular fuel filter, um, FF63009. It's got a 25 millimeter socket on the bottom. Um, without going through and digging all my tools, I just grabbed a one inch socket. We're gonna use that. This is the water fuel separator. Uh, Freightliner calls it the um, primary. Um, DDE R61709 uh, and that one came with the o-rings the tools we're gonna need we got to get the electronic clip off the bottom or the plug off the bottom that detects whether or not there's water and of course the one inch to get the primary filter off um, it's gonna be messy I have gotten multiple conflicting answers to my question so I actually called Freightliner directly and they say you need to pre-fill the filters. So I had to make a quick run up, yes I know it's a red can but it is diesel. I had to make a quick run up to the store and buy a little bit of diesel to pre-fill fill the filters before I put them on. So I think I've got everything gathered up. Um, my cardboard underneath the filters, there's the primary, there's the secondary. I also put a couple of oil catch cans here to catch any spillage that I may get. So hopefully I won't make too big of a mess. So let's see, this is the clip right here. I gotta take that off, take the wire off so that I can unscrew the canister. Let's get started. I don't know if I've got this working right or not, but um, I think, I hope you can see it. So there's a little red clip here on the bottom of the wires of the water fuel separator. You're supposed to pull this up and slide this red clip down, which I did, and I still can't get that off. So I kind of give up on that, because fortunately, right here is another plug, and I can just disconnect from there. Now I'll probably get diesel fuel all over this, but I'll clean it up before I put it all back together. Now I gotta unscrew that puppy. All right, I am um, trying to unscrew this puppy and with my bare hands, hoping it wasn't that tight, but I'm not coming close to budging it. I tried my water filter wrench. It's nowhere near big enough. I'm either going to have to go buy the wrench made specifically for that filter or find another way to try and get it off without breaking it. Let me play with it for a little bit. All right, folks, I cheated. Um, I used the jacks to lift the front up so I can get my tire out of my way. And very, 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 very gently and without squeezing, I just needed to catch the loops on here. I was able to break it loose using very large pair of channel locks. I do not recommend it. If you squeeze a little too hard, you're gonna break it. You don't wanna do that, but I got it loose. And I have a feeling this is going to make a lot of diesel everywhere. Let's see how much it spills. I've got the pan down below. And here comes some diesel. What a mess. All right, well, 
I'm not sure where I'm going to do this. All right. The filter itself won't come out of the casing. Man, there's a lot of crud in there. I think it's just a tight fit. Okay, this is supposed to just slide out and there's an O-ring on this filter down here and then an O-ring here. Um, but I'm having a hard time getting this guy out of the plastic. All right, I finally got it out. In order to get this off, I just kind of work it a little bit and it eventually comes out. Got a new o-ring for there and a new o-ring for here i'm amazed at how much dirt and grime is actually in there right, here comes my neighbor carl you probably remember him from working on the shocks Your channel locks work. Thank you very much for letting me borrow your channel locks. I was just being very, very gentle with it. Yeah. Now, yeah. got a big mess, but let me shut this off. Okay. Here's the canister uh, that I finally got off. I got got the inside all cleaned up. Um, there was some a big black ring here from the original O-ring. Supposedly, on the very first service when we bought this RV, I took it in at the 10,000 mile mark and had them change all the filters and oil and service everything. I'm not so sure that they actually did change the fuel water separator or primary filter because um, that it was pretty nasty. There was a lot of garbage in there um, and there was a lot of garbage inside this container. Um, but anyhow, the filter I got is a box. It's Detroit Diesel R61709 comes with the new filter and two new o-rings so we're going to put these o-rings on put a touch of oil on them the small one goes on here and the big one goes on here and just like oil filters I'm a big believer of a drop of oil this is just some 1030 that I put in the tractor when I changed the tractor oil the other day Doesn't need a lot, just want to make sure we got a good seal. And the filter goes in with the gasket down. And there's little lips there for it to set on. I don't know if you can see them. And it sits down right on that. And that seal is what keeps the separation. So if you get water in here, I don't know if you notice that there's two prongs on there that senses if there's water and then a drain. So I'm gonna go fill this up with diesel and clean diesel that I just bought at the local store and put it back on. Before I fill that up with clean diesel, I wanted to show you the old one. You saw the other one was white and look at all the black down in there. I don't know if you can see it or not. This thing is disgustingly filthy. I'm wondering if they actually did change that. 
then again, we are at 57,000 miles or 56,000 miles on this. So last time it was changed was 12,000 miles ago. Let me um, put this in here and fill it up with diesel and I'll come put this back on. All right, I got it filled up with some clean diesel. Let's see if we can get it in here and get it screwed back into place. Okay, it's in there, or on there, mostly tight. It's covered in diesel, and I'm covered in diesel. <clears throat> That's as tight as I can get it by hand. I'm not going to use any tools on it to tighten it unless I have leaks, but here we go. Now I did fill it with clean diesel before I started, but FYI, there is a primer pump back here. Ah, there we go. There we go. Nice and stiff now. <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead and change the next one. All right. I could not get it any tighter. I know it probably needs to go a little bit further because my wire's a little bit different location. This was actually over here about another quarter turn further where the wire comes out. But the wire fits. Get that plug back in. And um, we'll check if the leaks when we're all done. So now I'm going to go ahead and work on the secondary filter. I'm not so sure that this is a good enough shot, but we're going to try it. Um, I moved my catch pan underneath this filter now. And again, that's on the bottom, it's a 25 millimeter. Also, I'm doing a one inch. And we'll see if we can break it loose. The air lines for the brakes are going to be in the way, but let's see if we can get around them. Oh yeah, that broke loose without any issue. Doesn't even feel like there's any fuel in there. Come on, airlines are in the way. Hey, I don't even feel like there's any fuel. Well, there's some in there. But this has got two rings or two O rings on it. Well, let's change it out. Okay, I just filled it with diesel. Clean diesel, fresh from the store. The local Valero. It's interesting, I've doing a lot of reading and half the people say, fill it with diesel, the other half say don't. So I finally gave up and called the local Freightliner dealer in Little Rock. Uh, dog something, dog it or something like that, uh, Freightliner, and um, they specifically said yes, fill them. So that's what we did. There we go. Let's go put this back on. Okay. Let's hope I can get this in here without spilling too much.
Here we go. Man, I'm starting to smell like a Love's truck stop or a Flying J truck stop. Um, I think, if I remember correct, the specs on this is 25 inch pounds. So I've taken it up to where it touches. I'm gonna go about a quarter of a turn. Right there. Gonna right, make sure everything's good and primed. And then we're gonna go try and start it up. That's getting stiff. Yep, it's getting harder to push. The harder to push, the more primed it is. I remember on our old Seneca, it had the Duramax. It had the same type of prime, and you'd prime it till you can't push it anymore, which is where I'm at right now. Well, let's see what happens when we start it. I'm going to leave you guys running. It could get noisy. go through all of its cycles. I took it up to high idle, which is two clicks on the um, increase idle switch, whatever, to increase the idle for idling. So it was running at 1100 RPM. I checked every, dried everything, and then checked everything with my fingers, and I've got zero leaks. Um, what I ended up doing on this one, because I had that leak, is I remember this switch, uh, the plug for this, was actually facing this direction. And when I first put it on, I had it facing the other direction. I ended up having to take it a whole nother half turn um, and it's dry as can be. So call that a success on uh, changing those filters and water fuel separators. All I have left to do is uh, lube the chassis, pull out the grease gun and start lubing the chassis. And then we should be good. Um, the only other thing I want to do before we head to Southeast Canada is I want to clean all the basements and organize my spare parts tub um, because I've got these were my spares. I have ordered new ones that will become my spares. So I'm going to have new oil filters, fuel filters, fuel water separators, Jenny filters, air filters, fuel filters, etc. Those all go into my spare parts tub that I carry along with a serpentine belt and assorted other things. So anyhow, um, let's go ahead and start lubing. Well, just as I was finishing up the fuel filters and getting ready to start greasing, there's the grease gun, UPS showed up. I guess I'm not going to get a very long break on maintenance of working on the RV. Let's go get all those Zerk fittings done. Okay. Well, I went and looked at my notes from the last time I did this. 
the driver's side, front end, including the steering box, has seven Zerk fittings. The passenger side, because it doesn't have the, the steering box, has five Zerk fittings. So I'm going to get underneath here and clean them all up. And pull off the grease gun. Well, I'm just cleaning them. You don't need to watch that, I guess. So I've got them all cleaned. And now I'm just going through and putting the grease gun on them. And giving a couple pumps. Or until I see expansion. Six, and then the seventh one over here on the gearbox and then that one this side will be done um, you know how to use a grease gun clean your zerk fitting or alamite depending on what you call them with grease gun on and pump do not overfill I'm gonna go ahead and shut this off and get some of these done okay driver's side done uh, seven on that side we're no on the passenger side and there's five over here there's no steering gearbox so same thing I'm going to go ahead and clean them, which again, you don't need to watch, but I'm a firm believer of cleaning. I've seen some people just shove the grease gun on and start squirting, and I won't do that. So, All right, let me get underneath and get the bottom ones clean. There's a huge joint there, a huge joint here, and a carrier. That's one, two, three, four, five huge joints. That'd be ten. I thought the carriers each had one. Well, we're just going to start working our way down the drive shaft. Well, most of this is done by feel. As you can't really see, there it is right there. Once you find one, you know the other one is the opposite. So there are actually 13 Zerk fittings or alamites underneath. There's two on each universal joint opposite of each other. There's one on the slide, which allows for the drive shaft to expand and contract. And then there's one on each slack adjuster, which is part of the rear air brake system right in front of the rear axle. And that makes up for a total of 13 while underneath. So don't forget the, uh, the rear brake slack adjuster. Okay, we're going to call that a wrap. 
Um, today we did fuel filters, uh, the primary and secondary or water fuel separator and the fuel filter. Um, and we greased and lubed the entire chassis, uh, front suspension and the drive shaft. Yesterday I did the oil and oil filter and the day before I did the generator, oil, oil filter, fuel filter and air filter. So it's been an eventful three days trying to get everything done on this. Um, a lot of work to it, uh, but then again, I work at my own pace. So if I'd taken this in to someone, they probably could have done it all in about two hours. Of course, it'd cost you anywhere you know, from 700 to to $1,000. Um, but it took me three days, and it cost me my parts. So um, anyhow, thanks for watching. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Drop a comment, and I will answer what I can. Um, and if you haven't already, please subscribe. Uh, we're getting the rig ready for two months in uh, southeast Canada. We're going to go see some icebergs floating by uh, Newfoundland. At least that's the plan. So trying to get everything all done and ready. So subscribe so you can follow along on that one too. Anyhow, thanks for watching. Bye.